Yo, what's good? It's Mastermind MMA, and you are tuned into the first annual Mastermind Award Ceremony, aka the Max. So what this is going to be is we're going to recap the year in 2017 as it was in mixed martial arts. We're going to go through, we're going to talk about the best shit that happened in 2017, and we're going to talk about the worst shit that happened in 2017. Fighter of the year, fight of the year, knockout of the year, submission of the year, all that noise. Also, we're going to go through the worst fight of the year, worst card of the year, all that shit. So we're going to recap all that. And how, how it's going to work out is I absolutely did no pre-production on this. Uh, I planned on it, but I was like, no, nah, we're just going to go as, uh, go as we flow. So we're just going to go through. Um, if we miss, if I miss anything, that'll be why, you know. So here we go. The first annual Mastermind Award Ceremony. Ha, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> anyway, man. So 2017, bro. Let's talk about it. First off, man, 2017 in the year of mixed martial arts. Also, real quick, if you're watching this on January 1st, like when I drop it, I'm probably going on live stream on my PlayStation 4 to talk about 219 and all that. And um, that's most likely. I'm not sure. I got to figure some shit out. But back to what we're doing. All right. So 2017, man, it was... It was a weak start, a stronger finish. It didn't, <clears throat> we didn't, we then, it wasn't as good as 2016 because 2016 was the strong as fuck year, man. We had Connor and Nate, we had the rematch, we had the return of Ronda Rousey, we had a whole bunch of shit, man. We had a bunch of stacked cards. 2017 started out weak. Started out weak, started picking up, but it never really, really got that full momentum. Especially coming off of 2016, this year isn't as strong as that, but still a decent year. It had its moments, man. It definitely had its moments. As far as which combat sport won the year, it had to be boxing. You know what I mean? It had to be boxing. Uh, I'm... You, you guys know I'm a boxer, but when it comes to mixed martial arts, as a fan, I, I like mixed martial arts over boxing all day as a practitioner because of, like, I specialize and that's what I do. I prefer to actually train boxing, but when it comes to the sport, being a spectator, being a fan, it's MMA all day, bar none. Like, boxing doesn't even hold a candle to it. Um, and that's just me being me and giving my opinion on it. But boxing's still a great sport. Had an amazing fucking year, man. Um, honestly, it was kind of a, you know, what really, really, really propelled boxing to the forefront, of course, was Mayweather McGregor. And I think that's going to be a fucking staple of 2017. You know, um... It, it just brought combat sports in general to a whole nother level. Um, you know, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko. You know, real quick, boxing fight of the year, boxing fight of the century, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko. Hands down, bar none. That fight was the fight of the century, the greatest heavyweight fight I've seen in my lifetime, like living through it. So that's that. All right. So what we're going to do now is what the first category is going to be is going to be comeback of the year. So what this category entails is who had the best comeback in 2017, who was gone, um, what qualifies you as being gone? We'll say if you haven't fought in like a year or more, then <clears throat> we'll categorize it as you making a comeback year or longer. And <clears throat> in that category, we would have to have George St. Pierre, most definitely. We would have to have John Jones. Um, who else, man? Who else was gone and made a comeback? 
I really think that's it, to be quite honest with you. So, that's actually a really tough pick between John Jones and GSP. You see, John Jones, his shit is fucking tainted, like his test results, because he he popped dirty for something, man. So, you know, it's like, it's hard because... George St. Pierre, on one hand, came back after a four-year layoff of not stepping foot into the octagon, and he beats Bisping and becomes a two-weight world champion. The thing about that is both of these are fucked up, and both of these comebacks have been tainted, and the hype has been killed on it, because Jones popped dirty. We don't know what's going on with him. George St. Pierre... He vacated the belt. He's like, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would like to fight, but I, uh, I have colitis and, you know, Bisping, he hit me in the back of my head and, uh, my head and I, I, I take the belt, you know, and he just gave that shit up. He said, he just gave that shit the fuck up. In like 30 days, and he's like, uh, I'm good. I don't want to fight Robert Whitaker. I'm going to take a little break, which is all what we speculated what was going to happen and all that. But it doesn't take away the fact that he knocked out bitch. Now, he didn't knock him out. He knocked him down and choked him out cold. This is hard for me to pick because... I fucking hate bitch being on one hand, and it was amazing to see him get choked the fuck out and lose the belt. And on the other hand, man, I've been waiting to see DC get knocked out by John Jones for a while. Like, years. And all the buildup we've had and, like, all the fucking blue balls we had experience pause with Cormier Jones. It was... It, it, it was wild. So to finally see that come to fruition, and I know now the landscape change... Now more people are on DC side and stuff, and obviously I gained respect, more respect for DC after the way he handled the loss and even how he, how he, even till this day, regardless of Jones' test result, he's like, as a competitor, I did lose that fight, and you know his whole stand. So um, I'm not saying anything about DC now. I'm talking about when it, before Jones popped after he knocked him out during the rivalry, during the back and forth. How satisfying it was to see DC get knocked out. How satisfying that shit was to see it. What made it even sweeter is he knocked him out exactly the way I predicted he would knock him out. So I would have to give the award to John Jones. Johnny Bones Jones. Johnny Needle in the Ass Jones. Johnny Tainted Supplement Jones. For the winner of Comeback of the Year. You know... And it's ironic because his comeback set him up for another comeback. This motherfucker stays coming back. You know what I mean? So I'd have to give the comeback of the year to John Jones just because I've been waiting for that to happen for a long ass time. If you think about it, since 2015, we were really uh, waiting to see that rematch. 2016, uh, after UFC 200, after 197, he pulled out Cormier. 200, Jones got popped for tainted supplements. Comes back, knocks him out a year later. Boom. All right. So, I think that should transition into knockout of the year. Let's see, man. What were some knockouts of the year, bro? Ooh. You know what, man? I would say I would say categories and knockout of the year. I mean, um, you know... The motherfucker, the motherfucking uh, candidates for knockout of the year. Francis Ngannou versus Alistair Overeem. The death uppercut. The soul taking uppercut. That's, that's one, man. You, I would put Marlon Marias's knockout of Aljermaine Sterling as one of them as well. You know, because that shit was fucking brutal. Um... Josh Emmett, Ricardo Lamas, I'd put that as knockout of the year contender as well. 
because of how brutal it was and how um how how long he was fucking out. You know what I mean? Uh John Jones Daniel Cormier knockout of the year. Uh I would definitely put that on there because fuck man, he did that, that was something we we're waiting to see, homie, like straight up me personally. Let's see. Um Oh, Darren Elkins. I would put Darren that damage Elkins versus uh was it Mersad Bektik? Fuck man, who is he who is he fighting, man? Yeah, Mersad Bektik at two oh nine. Elkins was getting his shit handled, getting his ass whooped. Like a ten a ten seven fucking round, bro, and he came back and knocked a, a tough guy out. Darren the damage Elkin. I believe Elkin after that came and beat Dennis Bermudez. So he's having a good year, man. Shout out Darren Elkins. You know, that that was a good knockout. Um let's see. What else is there? Give me a second, guys. Um Oh, Thug Rose is knockout of Joanna Yun Jacek. That shit was fucking crazy, bro. That shit was crazy. Uh, Joanna and Jacek getting knocked out definitely is up there. And then the Edson Barboza knee of Benil Dariush. That shit was definitely uh definitely up there. And when we're talking about flying knees, you gotta throw in Paul Daly versus Brennan Ward, man. That shit was fucking brutal. What fight card was that on? I think that was on the Chael Tito Ortiz fight card. Brutal flying knee knockout. Um, <coughs> what was that other guy? Was it in Bellator or UFC, man? Where that guy did... That other guy had a crazy fucking flying knee. Um, I can't remember, man. Fuck. I can't remember that guy's name, and I can't remember what organization it was in, if it was in Bellator or UFC, but it was this crazy, crazy flying knee where, like, the guy gets him, like, in a tie clinch, like, a flying tie clinch, and just flies with his knee and brings it in. Um, we have Eddie Alvarez's knee knocking out Justin Gaethje, bro. Um, who else do we have, man? Fuck, bro. We got a lot of crazy ones. Um, but, you know, those are all the, the knockout of the year contenders. I would have to, absolutely have to, have to, have to give it to Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou. Fuck. Like, whoa. That knockout, that knockout power is he basically de- decapitated Overeem. Overeem is going to be shitting himself at the age of 42 or 45. <laughs> Starting from 45, his life is going to fucking suck. He might even be up there right now. In a few years, man, in, in 10 years, it's sad to say this, but Overeem is going to be like, he's going to be struggling. He's going to be have a lot of problems. And this kind of just, it took years off his life, man. Straight up. Straight up. Facts. Francis Ngannou took away at least five to six years off of the end of Alistair Overeem's life with that uppercut. Not only that, he took his soul. He took his soul. Took his soul. Like that shit is scary. That 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 kind of power is it's not even cool. It's not even funny. It's scary and it's brutal. So, you know, him kind of doing it towards the end of the year, parlaying it into a title shot, you know, it, it it's got to one hundred percent 
got to be Francis Ngannou just because of how brutal it was, man. And that was really a pivotal moment for his his um his motherfucking just him as a fighter. That was a very telling moment. It was if Francis Ngannou could get past this, he's the real deal. It was his, like how Yair Rodriguez had to go through Frankie Edgar. That was really his test for him. And he passed with motherfucking flying colors. Overeem's neck snapping back like a Pez dispenser. Overeem the Pez dispenser. Alistair the Pez dispenser Overeem, man. That's his name after that. The way his neck fucking opened up and dispensed the candy. Which was the title shot of Stipe. <laughs> so, shout out Francis for getting knockout of the motherfucking year, bro. Now, we're gonna go with... Um, submission of the year. What what submissions were good, man? We had that crazy armbar of Valentina Shevchenko versus Juliana Pena. We had uh, the Mighty Bar, or whatever the fuck he calls it. Uh, Mighty Mouse versus uh, Ray Borg, where he suplexed the armbar his ass. We have... um, What other crazy submissions were there? We got Ferguson's triangle over Kevin Lee. Wasn't that crazy? Uh, I'm trying to think. Was that Yuri Alicantra? I'm trying to think year um if that was last year. But I know Alicantra had a knee bar. Um uh Johnson had uh, another arm bar against Wilson Hayes. I won't you know, I won't I'm not I'm not gonna put that in there. Definitely Brian Ortega uh Cub Swanson, that motherfucking guillotine. That shit was wild. Bisping St. Pierre, I have to throw that in there, Bisping St. Pierre, that RNC, beautifully done, Uh, shout out Dan and her death squad, Um, Rose Nama Yunus versus Michelle Waterson, that was a shocking RNC, you know, she kicked her, she dropped her, she hopped on the back, choked her out, and that pretty much was the beginning of the champion Thug Rose, you know, um, what else? You know, we got St. Prue with his, uh, Von St. Prue choke. You know, his Von Flute choke is his shit. You know what I'm saying? So you got to shout out OSP with his year he had with that. Um, what other, what other fights had crazy submissions? I'm trying to think off top. Actually, man, um, yeah, I think that's about it that I covered. Let me, um, let me think. Give me a few seconds. Uh... I think we covered it all. Oh, um, Brett Johns had a, a calf slicer on Joe Soto. You can't forget that. Um, yeah, he had that calf slicer. That was, I think, the first calf slicer. And, uh, yeah, man, I think that's it. So, I would have to say... I would have to say, honestly, man, award for submission of the year goes to Mighty Mouse. I would have to say that because of how creative it was, how dope it looked at the the point in the fight that it happened. It was just complete and utter domination from Mighty Mouse. And, you know... You guys are on the channel. You guys know my take on Mighty Mouse. I rock with Mighty Mouse. I like Mighty Mouse as a fighter. And I appreciate Mighty Mouse as a fighter. But I've always said Mighty Mouse isn't pound for pound anything, man. I wouldn't even, like... Honestly, outside of the fact he's a dominant champion 
I wouldn't even really, if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't even have him on the pound for pound list. And I say that with all due respect, because like I said, man, at 135, I think Jimmy Rivera fucking washes Mighty Mouse. I think Marlon Marais fucking washes Mighty Mouse. Um, most of the top 135ers, I mean, look what a big flyweight could do to Mighty Mouse. Um, Tim Elliott, you know, dropped Mighty Mouse. He was kind of, you know, if it wasn't for like a little bit of, if it wasn't for Mighty Mouse's kind of resilience and his his ability to adapt and to, you know, change his game plan and think on the fly, it would have been Elliot's night. So but that that is to Mighty Mouse's credit. But someone who you know, Tim Elliott is, is a, a good good high level fight. But um you know, he's a good high level fighter, but He's nowhere near Mighty Mouse's level, and the fact that he could hang with Mighty Mouse like that says a lot. And and Tim Elliott is basically a 135er. But I'm not shitting on Mighty Mouse because when it comes to technique, when it comes to, you know, just his the way he blends the art and his smoothness and you know, just an incredibly technically sound fighter. I would I would put him one of the most technical fighters in the UFC. I would have him maybe number one on that list. You see, I'm going to give credit when credit's due. Because his technique from his jiu-jitsu, his striking, his, his cardio, his pace, everything is extremely high level. He's an amazing technical fighter and he is the greatest of all time at flyweight and only at flyweight and that's the credit I give to him honestly um so yeah I would have to give the mighty bar man that was dope that suplex the suplex to arm bar no and the way he transitioned it it, it was beautiful from from an uneducated eye, someone could see that and be like, that was motherfucking crazy. What was that? And from a technical eye, you just appreciate it even like a hundred times more, man. So shout out, shout out to Mighty Mouse and shout out to the Mighty Bar. Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is fight of the year. The best fights of 2017. Uh, I'm going to have to think about this, man. What was the best fights? Oh, of course, of course, we got to have Michael Johnson, Justin Gaethje. 100,000%. That's a fight of the year contender, man. Crazy, crazy motherfucking fight, man. Gaethje getting wobbled like a motherfucker. Gaethje, you know... Dude, like, getting rocked and him just not giving not one fuck coming forward regardless, eating shots and just breaking Michael Johnson. Like he said, taking him to that deep water and just drowning him. And that's exactly what Gaethje did. Man, someone who had a great year when it comes to entertaining fights, Dustin Poirier. You could pick any, pretty much any Poirier fight he had this year. His Eddie Alvarez fight, his Anthony Pettis fight. Um, you know, he uh, the the Jim Miller fight, man. Uh, fuck, bro. He had he had uh, he had a great year. He had a great motherfucking year. Uh, so I definitely put any of those Dustin Poirier fights in there as fight of the year. Um, you know, that Eddie Alvarez fight was a fun fight until Alvarez threw an illegal knee. And then Eddie Alvarez versus Justin Gaethje. I have to put that as a fight of the year as well. Because that shit was fun as fuck. You know, that was a minute away from being an amazing war. A three-round war. Um, you know, so shout out. Shout out that them <laughs> tj dillashaw versus cody garbrand i would definitely put there put that as fight of the year fight of the year contender because of how crazy it was the stakes are so high 
the rivalry was so deep, the bad blood run, ran for miles. And, you know, Cody Garbrandt dropping TJ Dillashaw. Almost, if there was three seconds, he could have finished him off. Pause. Um, TJ Dillashaw coming back a minute later, you know, listening to his coach, making the adjustment, dropping Cody with a head kick. And then, you know, in the pocket, exchanging with Cody, knocking him out, fucking him up. Cody Cody getting up all out of it and TJ just screaming in his face. That's an iconic picture, man. Where TJ's just like screaming in Cody's face and his eyes are like rolling up in the back of his head still kinda. Looking mad out of it. That was that was a crazy, crazy moment. Lando Venata versus Bobby Green. Gotta throw in throw, throw gotta throw that in there because it was a crazy entertaining fight. Let's see, man. Um, when it comes to scrambles, you know, an extremely technical, fun fight full of scrambles and jujitsu was Tim Elliott versus Louis Smoka. That shit was was fun as fuck, man. That shit was was uh, fun as fuck. Just from the scrambles, just from a technical eye, you know, that was the equivalent of uh, a three-round war, but take away striking and just make it grappling and scrambles and transitions and sweeps, and it was just 15 minutes of crazy sweeps and crazy transitions and crazy technical shit, man. Um, Yancey Medeiros and Cowboy. That was uh, pretty pretty recent, and it was fun as fuck. Yeah, man. Uh, let me think. What else was there? Um, I think I think that's all I could think of right now, off the top. I would say, honestly, man, I would have to say fight of the year goes to Justin Gaethje and Michael Johnson. That fight really put Justin Gaethje on the map, uh, a star-making performance, and it, it puts his stock, it, it puts him in one of those kind of categories where the UFC could always get behind them, always promote them, knowing it's going to be a fun fight either way. If if he wins or loses, it's going to be a fun fucking fight, and he's willing to go out on his motherfucking shield. So, shout out to Justin Gaethje, shout out Michael Johnson for winning the Mastermind Fight of the Year. Now, um, let's see. I think the next category we're going to do is the biggest upset of 2017. Honestly, man, I don't even think I have to run through a list of upsets. I would just have to say it is Rose Namajunas versus Joanna Yunjacek. That was like kind of the straw weight home Rousey fight. That was Thug Rose dethroning an extremely dominant champion and an extremely dominant fashion where no one thought it was possible. I don't even think we have to we we don't even have to run run through any of that because any other upsets because that takes the cake, man. Upset of the year goes to Rose Nami Yunus for beating um uh Joanna and J Check. So shout out Rose, shout out Thug Rose, Thug Rose, Thug Rose, Thug Rose <laughs> Shout out the Gros. And um yeah, man. So shout out, shout out Rose Nami Yunus for having an incredible performance. Now it's let's see, let's see what she does as a champion. And you know, the UFC <clears throat> could really get behind her and really start pushing her. You know what I'm saying? So um All right, so now what we're going to do is Fighter of the Year. This 
is going to be who was who had the best year. Um, I would say I would say in that category would be um. I would say it, you know, Robert Whitaker, he, he's definitely in that talk. He had an incredible, incredible fucking year, man. He beat Jacare Souza. He beat Yoel Romero. He went through the toughest guys in that division. He's got a fight with Luke Rockhold coming up. Keep in mind, man, this is a guy who came up from 170. Um, when Robert Whitaker uh, beat my guy Uriah Hall... I don't know if many people even had that had him on his radar, but to be such a young guy, um, I think he's like a few years older than me, um, and to be middleweight champion of the world, that shit's what's up, man. And the way he did it, you know, he was an interim champ, but no one saw him as the interim champ because he went through the toughest people in the division, like a Tony Ferguson, someone else who's had an amazing year. Um, he, I mean, he was supposed to go through Khabib and fight Khabib, but you know that we all know what happened with that. So he did his damn thing. He's on a crazy streak. He went through the division and look what Rafael Dos Anjos did to Robbie Lawler. And then look what Tony Ferguson did to Rafael Dos Anjos. So that, you know, honestly, like Ferguson could thrive at 170. I could see Tony Ferguson being a two weight world champion. I, I I really could see that, but you know another thing is he's he does get clipped up, so I don't know if he could like handle one of Woodley's shots like that, but he definitely has potential of being a two weight world champion, man. Vulcan Ozdemir, man. Last February, like he went from uh, no, I think this bro, he went from not in the UFC. To a title shot in a year. Granted, the granted the division is light as fucking. He just had to knock out like two people to get it. But still, man, to do that and to to be in a position where you're fighting for the title in that short of a time, shout out to you. You deserve credit, regardless of how the division is. Max Holloway, he unified the title against Jose Aldo, beat his ass. And then he he beat Jose Aldo's ass again to to prove that he is the new featherweight king. We are in the blessed era. If you don't know now, you motherfucking know. It's the blessed era, man. The king of featherweight, his name is Max Holloway. He's probably in a fresh ass suit with a hex tie on. And he's doing the damn thing, man. Shout out Max Holloway. Shout out to him being such a motherfucking gangster that he could just do his thing and just handle Jose Aldo the way he handled Jose Aldo and the way he just welcomes everybody in the division. You know what I'm saying? Brian Ortega had a good year. He had a good fight against Clay Guida. Um, I don't remember if his other fight was in this year, but, you know... He had a good fight against Clay Guida and or was that even this year? I mean, he all right, we'll just talk about his Swanson fight, man. Had a good performance over Cup Swanson, who was almost he was on the precipice of a title shot. If he won this, he would have been next up. And you know, after that Duho Choi fight, Cup Swanson, his he kind of killed his hype by fighting Artem and going to a decision with Artem. That really killed the hype. And then the way he lost to Ortega, it wasn't bad, you know, the way he lost. But the fact is, he lost against Ortega. So, um, I can't, I can't, I can't be mad at that. Um, Ryan Bader, he left the UFC and he got the title. At Bellator, and he defended the title at Bellator, so that's good for him. You know, Kelvin Gastelum, I would say, had a good year. He, um, you know, he he's been looking good at middleweight. I feel like if he could cut, if he could make a a cut, 
to 70, he's championship caliber. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't remember his fight against Woodley the first time, but I'm pretty sure it went to a decision. And I think this Calvin, and that's a young Gaslam. And I think this Gaslam now, man, he could, he could fucking, he's championship caliber. Let's put it at that. Um... What else, man? Fighter of the year. Who else had a good year? TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw had a good year because he won the belt back. I mean, granted, he only fought that title fight, but he was willing to fight Mighty Mouse, and, you know, that never came to fruition. But he had a great year. He won the belt back. Um, Let's see, man. Who else? You had you had Cyborg have a good year. Got into the UFC. Got her belt. Beat Tanya Avenger. Uh, and now defended against Holly Holm. So she had a really good year. Uh, and, and her whole... From the start of the year where... How it was at 206. You know what I mean? Where... Or 208. My bad. At 208 where... After she got flagged by USADA... And all that, and the landscape, and how everyone was like shitting on her and against her to where she is now, and how people are rooting for her. Uh, I definitely, definitely, she had a good year with how it, it, um, how, how the public perception changed on her. Um, let's see, man. What else? Who else had a great year? I'm thinking. Lots of people, bro. Uh, Darren Till. Darren Till had a great year, bro. His come out party um, with Cowboy. The way he handled Cowboy. Knocked him out in the first fucking round, bro. And that, that that's up there with upset of the year. But the way he knocked out Cowboy in the first round. And... His introduction to the to the masses and the way he's handling himself, you know, uh, Mike Perry, me and you were meant to fight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the way he was calling him out, and he's like, I want to thank my fucking coach, it's fucking crazy, hold this thing, and you know, he's got that got that scouse, you know, that scouse accent, and and he he's just got like that kind of. McGregor S vibe and he could really follow McGregor's blueprint. You know, he he's one of those dudes that could like pretty much follow McGregor's blueprint to a T and not have it be cringeworthy. So 2018 can be a breakout year for Darren Tillman. Uh Rafael Dos Anjos had an incredible 2017, especially with how he ended it with the fight against Robbie Lawler, man. RDA had a great year. Um Number two, ending the year as the number two ranked welterweight on the precipice of a title shot. Rose Namajunas, of course, had an incredible year, beating Michelle Watterson, knocking out Joanna Yen Jacek, making her tap out to strikes, and winning the belt in incredible fashion. Amazing, amazing year. I'm not going to put DJ in here because it's it's DJ, you know what I mean? So, um, no hate. Um, yeah, man. And Tony Ferguson. I already said that. But, all right. So, the, the first annual Mastermind Award Ceremony Award for Fighter of the Year goes to... Drumroll, please... It goes to Robert Whitaker. Robert the Reaper Whitaker. And the reason I'm giving it to Robert Whitaker is because in a division where the champion wasn't being a champion, where the champion wasn't doing championship duties. What the fuck is that, man? Who's doing some shit outside? Fucking, uh, well, that's the bad thing when you have a really good mic. It just picks up 
crazy noises. Fucking A, man. I'm trying to do a show here. Turn that shit down. It's the thing about when I'm at my house in New York. You just get so much noise outside. Uh, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. He added stability. He was being a... He was being the 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 beacon in that division, especially the way he came up and how no one saw it, man. When you looked at his fight against Derek Brunson, I mean, the way he handled Brunson, mostly because of Brunson's dumbass, the way he fought that fight. But when Whitaker, when Whitaker was in that position, no one really would be like, all right, that guy is going to be the guy to beat Jacare Souza. That guy is going to be the guy to beat Yoel Romero. That guy is going to take out the top two people in the division. No one thought that, man. But after he knocked out Jacare, we're like, oh, shit. This guy's on some shit. Because keep in mind, when Bisping knocked out Rockhold, Jacare was pretty much next in line. Jacare should have been the one to fill in for Bisping. I mean, for uh, for Weidman, when Weidman had a pullout, and when it, where it was between Bisping, Bisping and Jacare, Jacare should have been the one to do it. But Luke picked Bisping, and he paid the price. Bisping should have fought Jacare after that. Instead, he fought Dan Henderson and lost that fight, in my opinion. Then he fights GSP, who, who is a welterweight coming out of a four-year retirement and loses to him. So Robert Whitaker was really the champion. Although we lost the lineage of the belt, the integrity of the belt stays because of the strength of Whitaker's resume. So you got to give... You got to give Robert Whittaker props on that. So shout out Bobby Knuckles, man. Now, the next category is going to be best fight card of 2017. Obviously, the number one seed for that is UFC 217. Arguably the best fight card ever. You know what I mean? 217 had... It it was one of those cards, man. Although it was stacked, it wasn't 205 stacked. But every fight on that came the fuck through. It had... Like how 199 was. You know, everyone's like, oh, 199's gonna suck ass because of 200 and everything. Like, because everyone's just waiting for 200. Who the fuck wants to watch 199? That was beforehand. But... When 199 happened, that was an incredible, incredible, incredible card. So 217, man, it it was really up there for one of the best cards. Um, let's see, man, what other main uh pay per view cards were good? 214. Is up there for one of the best cards, you know. Uh, three three title fights. So you had three title fights, and you know, three fun fights. Ah, I I retract that statement. Woodley Mayo is boring. Uh, Tanya Evinger and what's her face? Um, oh, Cyborg. How did I forget that? And uh, Cyborg. That was an okay fight. And John Jones, DC. You know, that was a good fight. But that card was pretty good. Um, let's see, man. The um That fight card the the Romero Whitaker card. That was a pretty decent card. Um I'm trying to think, man, like what cards what else was there, man? I you know what? I'm just going to end it, and 217 was the best card of the year. There's no really no point in going through anything else because we know 217 was the best card of 2017. Hands down, bar none. No, no other card holds a candle to it this year. Now, we're going to get into... We, we, we might switch gears back a little bit. Now we're going to get into the bad side of 2017. We got a lot of bad shit that happened in 2017 when it comes to events and fight cards, man. I would say, man, 
the most disappointing card of the year. The most disappointing card of the year would have to go to... Well, let, let's run through the, the candidates. You got 209. Very disappointing card. You got 208. Very disappointing card. Um, I'm trying to think. Bro. What else we got? Two, uh, oh, what was 211, man? Who was in 211? Okay, Stipe Junior Dos Santos. That's not in there. That was, a, that was an okay card. Uh, 210. That card was all right. That was a DC Rumble. That was actually, you know, I'm going to put there. Uh, I'm going to put 210 as a disappointing card. Uh, but. I think, you know, that that's a fucking, look, I mean, look at the top of the year, how shitty that was, 208, 209, 210, just like, not great cards at all, man, um, yeah, bro, I'd have to, I would have to, I'd have to give the most disappointing card to UFC 209, because, it was supposed to be Tony Ferguson, Khabib Nurmagomedov. It was supposed to be, you know, we finally got that fight. But instead, it was just another tiramisu incident. You know, it was Khabib missing weight. It was us not getting the fight again. Especially with how late it got pulled. It was just a all-around shitty thing. And then on top of that... On top of that, to make it shittier as fuck, you got Woodley Thompson 2 on there, which was an extremely boring fight. You know, just from a, a spectator perspective, it was terrible. Terrible. Get, I get it was a chess match and all that, and da 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 da, and with a technical eye, I could see the beauty within it, but. Purely from an entertainment standpoint, purely from a fan standpoint, that shit was a stinker. That shit fucking sucked. That shit was bullshit. This is number one bullshit, as Khabib says. That's what that fight was. Number one bullshit. And I think, man, that shit just sucked. It was a disappointment all around. All around. It hurt Wonder Boy, his stock. It hurt Woodley's stock, and it was just a terrible, terrible, terrible disappointment, that fight, and the fact that Khabib didn't come. So I'd say most disappointing card of the year, UFC 209. Next category, worst card of the year. I don't have to run through anyone else, because pretty much what was in the most disappointing was in the worst cards. But the winner of the worst card of the year is USC 208. And that was in Barclays, man. I almost went to that shit. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. So, you know, the fact that the USC comes to Brooklyn and gives the absolute worst card of the motherfucking year, that shit just pisses me off, man. And it was not only was it a shit card, the main event is riddled with controversy. The wrong person won it. And it was just ass all around, man. It was just shit. Straight up. Straight up, it was just a shitty, shitty, um shitty motherfucking fight. Uh, yeah, so that was, fuck, um, that was the worst card of the year, hands down. Now, give me one second. So, we're gonna do now commentator of the year. Uh, obviously, I mean, like, Joe Rogan is one of the best commentators, but it's outside of Joe Rogan, you know what I mean? And I'm going to have to give 2017 to Paul Felder because Paul Felder, as a commentator, had a breakout year and 
you know, he, he, he showed his skills on the mic. So shout out Paul Felder. Um, analyst of the year. Um, when it comes to analysis, man, who really, who was a good analyst this year, bro? I don't even know. When you look at analysts of the year, I don't, I don't, I don't see anyone except for the usual suspects doing anything different. You feel me? So I'm not even going to run through analysts of the year because I don't think anyone really deserves it because no one really had like a, a standout moment to me like that. Um, unless you're just going to give it to Dom Cruz, but even Dom didn't do much analyst work this year. So, I'm not giving anyone Analyst of the Year. I don't think anyone did. You know what? I'm giving myself Analyst of the Year. How about that? <laughs> analyst of the Year goes to Matt, goes to Jake, a.k.a. Mastermind, for Analyst of 2017. How about that? So, yeah. Shout out to me for winning Analyst of the Year. Um, What else we got, man? Uh, I, I think at this point... I can't, I kind of ran through everything I could, especially when I'm giving myself awards. Um, uh, I think, uh, like coach of the year, we'll, we'll, we'll do coach of the year who had a good year, man. Um, I think usual suspects, man, you got Greg Jackson, Rafael Cordero. I think a new player would be Jason Perillo. Um, I think... I think that's about it, man. Like, I'm trying to think whether. Oh, um, Travis Whitman. That's his name, right? Rose Namajunas' coach. He had a good year. He has a champion, Rose. Uh, Gaethje got into the UFC, had a, a good year in the UFC despite a loss. So, um, shout out to him. I would say coach of the year. I don't know who to give it to, man. It's kind of tough. You know, I'm leaving the, I'm leaving this award open ended. Comment down who you think would be coach of the year, because I I really don't know. Um, I think that's about it, bro. Like, I can't really think of anything else to wrap up or any new categories unless I start doing some bullshit like MMA website of the year and like <laughs> shit like that. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and you know what? This is going to be, obviously, this is all my picks, but I want you guys to comment down below who do you think won what, you know, because I'm, I'm just making my picks. So, you guys let me know what you think of the category, who you guys thought was the best fighter of the year, the best fight of the year, knockout of the year, submission of the year, um, all that shit, man, you know, and, you know, I, I just want to say, guys, 2017 for me and the channel, especially the channel, it's been a, a great year, you know, we had a lot of growth on the channel, I, you know, I made a, a lot of good friends on the channel that I rock with, that I talk to, that really, really make the sport more fun and me watching the sport more fun because I have people that are passionate about it that I could talk to and all of you guys man I, I I really 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 appreciate all of you guys everyone listening everyone subscribing everyone commenting and you know just everyone that just rocks with me man like I, I fuck with you guys so heavy. It's not even cool. It's not even funny, man. How much, how much I rock with you guys, and how much I appreciate you guys. Cause you guys are the shit, man. You guys are are the reason I do this. You know, I did this honestly. Like 2016, I had six subs. Um, no one really even commented on my shit. You know, I didn't even know if people were watching it, and I pretty much, like, stopped for a while, you know what I mean? Because, like, after UFC 200, I did a podcast up on UFC 200, and then that was, like, it for a while, you know what I mean? Um, 
that that was it for a little bit. And I came back and, you know, grew grew an audience and grew people I really rock with. All you guys, you know, you guys are the are are are, are the motherfucking shit straight up. You guys are the shit. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And 2018, we're going to keep doing the damn thing, you know. Mastermind MMA Media is is here to stay. We're here to do the thing. We're here we're here to do what we do, man. We just talk MMA with great people and all you guys are amazing, straight up. Like you guys you guys are incredible and I appreciate you and we're going to have an amazing 2018. So shout out to you guys. Shout out everyone, man, and you guys are incredible. You already know it's Mastermind MMA, and this has been the first annual Mastermind Award Ceremonies.